Okay, chemistry. Miss Howard Chemistry Unit 8, Chemical Reactions and Balancing, Part 3. Yes, there are several parts of these. Deal with it. We're still talking about the same teaks. Haven't created or invented any new ones for you on this one. So we start off with Roman numeral number 3, Balancing Chemical Equations. All right, how do you go about balancing chemical, equa chemical equations? Some of you guys are going to pick up on this really quickly. Some of you guys... You're just going to have to plod through it and work and work and work. It just depends on how your brain clicks with this. Um, if you think of them kind of like little puzzles, if you like puzzles, that'll work for you. Um, there are several ways that we'll practice writing and balancing chemical equations in class. Capital letter A, chemical equations must be balanced to show that mass has been conserved in the reaction. It's the law of conservation of mass. That's how we say, yeah, we haven't broken any um, universal laws at all. Number one, the same number of atoms. If we look at the chemical equation and we think of them as atoms, like um, one atom of Na plus one atom of Cl yields one molecule or formula unit of NaCl. If we think of them as atoms, a lot of times um, that makes it simple for people to think of them that way so that they can balance them. You have to have the same number of Na atoms on the left side of the arrow as you have on the right side of the arrow. You can't just you know create Na atoms out of nothing. It, there's a kind of a process that you can use for balancing um, some little tricks and hints that I'll give you. In, uh, but really, it just comes down to you have to have the same number of, of uh, grams of stuff or you have to have the same number of atoms of stuff on each side. Okay, start, and this is really, really important. You have to start with the proper formula first. If you mess up the formula, it's not going to work out right. So if you say, well, H2O, I'm going to call it um, H3O instead of H2O, things aren't going to work out so well for you. So make sure that the formula is written correctly. Count the number of atoms on each element. If you need to draw a line down the center where the arrow is and say, okay, write down here, there are this many NAs on one side, there are this many NAs on the other side. Maybe that's what you'll need to do. You need to come up with a process, and I'll show you several, Something that works for you. Something that helps you to get it right. It doesn't matter if the person next to you uses a different process. What works for you? Balance the equation by adding whole numbers in front of the products and reactants. You balance the equation by adding the big coefficients in front of the formula. Don't ever balance your equation by writing down or changing the little subscripts. You know, H2O is always H2O, that law of proportions. Um, where there are always two H's for every o, one O in water. That's, that's that proportion for water. If you mess up those coefficients, you no longer have water. I'm sorry. If you mess up those little subscripts, you no longer have water. So you really have to pay attention to that. Okay, there are a couple of little hints, and I'll bring these back up a little bit later. Work one element at a time, or if it makes life easier, in many cases it does. You remember how we talked about the polyatomic ions, how they tend to stay together as chunks or units? You can say, oh, how many of these CO3 units do I have? And if they stay together on the other side of the arrow, then you can say, oh, I've got one chunk of CO3 over here. I've got one chunk over here on the other side. Never change the subscripts, only the coefficients. This is where I have a lot of people, they just want to erase those little bitty subscripts and change them. And you can't because that changes the formula, the stuff that you're working with. Save oxygen and hydrogen until last. Um, oxygen and hydrogen can just be real snot to try and balance on both sides. If you save those two until last, it just makes your life a little bit easier. Check your work when you're done. Check your work. Check your work. Check your work. Did I say check your work? I think I did. All right, so here's the basic process. Check for the diatomic molecules first. Diatomic molecules, remember, they're the ones that when they're in their pure form, they are always written as H2, O2, N2, and so on. If you vaguely remember, I told you to write this down, help our class find its brain now. Those are the diatomic molecules. It's a mnemonic to help you remember. Help, that's H, hydrogen. Our, that's O, oxygen. Class, Cl, chlorine. Find F, fluorine, it's I, iodine, brain, VR, bromine, and now, in nitrogen. And if you look on the periodic table, they kind of make an upside down L, group 17, and then right across the top of that first row that goes across there. 
check for those diatomic molecules. A lot of times that can make your life easier when you realize, oh, hey, I shouldn't have just written that as H. I should have written it as H2. If these elements appear by themselves in an equation, they have to be written as diatomic molecules with a 2 subscript. Right. This is a really good little mnemonic, again, that will help you kind of choose an order to balance things in. So if you use this minnow, M-I-N-O-H, metals first. So you guys all know the vast majority of the elements on the periodic table are metals. Ions, especially the polyatomic ions, that's what we're talking about here. So metals first, polyatomic ions second, nonmetals third, and then again, save oxygen and hydrogen until last. Recount your atoms. Once you think you have it balanced, recount everything, because it's really easy to kind of forget, and oh, you changed it over here, but you didn't go back and fix it on the other side. So always recount everything when you get finished. Balance equations by changing the coefficients, never by changing subscripts. Did I say that before? I'm pretty sure I said that before. Change, balance the equations by changing the coefficients, the big numbers in print, not by changing the subscripts. If you go, you've gone through all this mess and you just can't get it to balance, go back, erase all your coefficients, go back and check each formula and see if the formula is written correctly because maybe you started off with an incorrectly or improperly written formula. And that's just really throwing things off for you. Sometimes you might even need to say, okay, I'm going to erase all the coefficients that I've scribbled on there, and then just get up and walk away for five minutes and come back. Or if you have a, a, several of these to do, skip that one, say, okay, I'll just come back to the end, go do the other ones, and then come back to that one that was messing you up. All right, so you always have to check. If every coefficient, finally, the last thing, if all the coefficients that you wrote in there will reduce, you need to simplify or or reduce these so that they're in the simplest whole number ratio. Okay? Notice you're going to have to do a lot of erasing. Don't balance the equations in ink. What you need to do is get you a supply of pencils. I believe they sell those at Walmart. Even with erasers, it's amazing what they can do these days. So get you some pencils, bring them to class with you, take them home with you, use them. Ah, oh, use the law of conservation of mass to write and balance equation.